Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. So welcome to what, I don't know if this is just one reading or this is going to be um, a collective of readings over time. So I'm going to, uh, you can see by the, um, the thumbnail and the title that this is something different that I've not done on my channel before. So I'll let you know how we led up to this. So it was um, two nights ago, two nights ago. Well, a morning ago, whatever. Um, I woke up to uh, to my dog Lily, kind of like, rah, rah, it, which is really rare for her. She doesn't fix up, except my raccoon under my bed experience from about a week ago. But outside of that, it's really odd for Lily to react in the night at all. Like, so it woke me up, and of course, because I just had an incident with a raccoon under my bed about a week ago. Um, I was like hyper alert. Oh, what's going on? Why? Why is Lily reacting like that? Because it's not like her. So it's my little dog, Lily. And um, I could hear like, I don't know what I would describe it as like a hum. Like a hum? I was hearing like a hum and I'm thinking, where's that coming from? And Lily is like really reactive. She's um, off the bed now. She's and I'm thinking, OK, I feel like I need to make sure like nobody's trying to break into the house or anything. Right. Because literally like that's how she would rea react. She wouldn't react unless she could hear something strange going on at a time that it shouldn't be happening or somebody's really close to the house. It shouldn't be. Otherwise, she won't really react. So I'm hearing like this hum and I can't really figure out where it's coming from. Um, and. Eventually, I don't know, like I maybe spend about 10, 15 minutes walking through the house. I can't find anything. I, I managed to get Lily to calm down and I go back to bed and I'm laying in bed. I think it was about, I don't know, it was about 2 a.m. when this was happening. So I lay in bed and then I'm trying to go back to sleep and I can't. But I'm not like restless and I'm not tossing and turning. I'm just laying there. And I feel like at some point that I may have kind of gone sort of in that state between dream and sleep or wake and sleep. And um, as I guess I'm sort of hitting that point, and I want to call it almost like even just a non, -in non a non intentional meditative state as well. I think when you kind of sit like that, I started hearing galactic counsel. <laughs> I was like, and I mean, uh, I just kind of sat there for a minute. And I think I was hearing it and hearing it. It was almost like something that was um, not very loud and then just got progressively loud in my mind. And I sat there and then I just sort of stopped and I woke up and I'm like, what's going on? Like, there's, like I feel like I'm actually receiving a message. It was like Galactic Council, Galactic Council, Galactic Council, Galactic Council. And um, I just sat and I guess for a minute, like my... Um, my more conscious mind sort of like started reflecting on that. I'm thinking, galactic, galactic. Like I've heard that word before. Have I heard that word before like in um, Star Wars, Star Trek? Have I heard it on anything that I've explored? In a, like I used to do a ton of exploration and all sorts of different um, concepts of life outside of the planet and things like that. Like the Gaia channel. I've been ever, I've been on so many avenues, but that was years ago. Like I actually, I think I explored a lot of it before most people started to, like, I want to say probably eight years ago, um, between six and eight years ago. But anyways, um, I, I was thinking to myself, well, I've heard of Galactic Federation. Is this something similar? And so I closed my eyes again. And I just like relaxed. I just relaxed without any intention. It was kind of a good time to do it, right? I just relaxed without any intention. And then I started to visual, like see, visualize, um, like a being. And I would describe this being, how would I describe it? <laughs> okay. I described this being as having a very kind of large, prominent head, but not like globular, <laughs> like not like a, a round head, like, you know, the type alien, like a very human type head, very human type head. Um, I don't think he had any hair. I don't think he had any hair. And I say he, it seemed like a masculine energy, but his facial structure, I would say, was even perhaps long, kind of long, very chiseled features. Um, and he was so dark. Oh, yeah, like, but not... I mean, black, black, but you know, black that it's almost purple, 
Like it was black to like more purple. It was, I would say more purple. <laughs> more purple, but so dark. And like, and purple, <laughs> purple, like a really deep dark blue, blue, maybe more blue purple. I don't know, because I was seeing like the chiseled features in this being's face. Like where the light was hitting it, it was where you would like see like the bluish purple in the, the tone of the skin. Um, no, Larry. My cat's upset right now because there's a black cat outside that he hates. Um, so I just thought, wow, that's interesting. I feel like like there's something coming in here. Like it felt like a very um, kind of downloaded experience. And... Um, I eventually just kind of like finally relaxed like this whole thing took in the time that I was just laying there awake and then I eventually went to sleep it was probably maybe an hour an hour and a half and I went to sleep and then I woke up in the morning and then I thought to myself well wait a second something odd happened in the night and so then I kind of replayed it all into my in my own mind and I started looking up like galactic council the thing that I got up the most what came up the most was um galactic 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 federation but i thought no i distinctly heard council and um anyways i thought that was odd so I'm, I'm feeling like called to um to investigate this a little bit more so i sat down and um i was guided to this this deck which i have not picked up probably in a few years i've never found it easy to connect with um and the funny thing is like I couldn't understand why, because the artwork is simply um, spectacular. It's beautiful. Like, look at that. It's a beautiful, beautiful deck. It's Cheryl Lee Harnish, who I'm a big fan of. She has a YouTube channel. She hasn't touched it in a couple of years. I've heard from other people that she is doing stuff and she's okay and everything. So she's another fellow Canadian and she's created this deck and a Return of Spirit deck. I think she's got a couple others. But anyways, this is a deck that I really have not worked with on my channel, maybe once or twice. Um, struggled with it quite a bit so I thought I'm just I'm that's the deck I just felt like that I was just following my intuition what am I being called to do here and so um this was completely happening off camera so I was shuffling the cards and a card like literally just came out on its own just slid out and flew out and um <laughs> I looked at it and it just stopped me I stopped actually and I said I can't do any more I'm not, I'm not going to pull any more cards off camera with this because there's something here like this. And, and I, I feel like to like to give any sort of credibility to messages that I bring through, I feel like it's important for me to pull the cards out on camera. And it's not to um, say that anyone who, who doesn't do that, that it's not credible. It's just something that I feel I need to do for whatever reason. Right. And I and I think, though, I want to explore it with you guys as well. Um as they as they come out so i'm going to show you the card that came out and i literally like it just stopped in my track so this is the card that came out and I, what i was kind of asking was am i actually connecting with something is there something out there that i'm connecting with um it, when i'm hearing and seeing this uh, galactic council isn't it crazy there's a face there and it's purple <laughs> it's a purple face so i believe it's the lion card so yeah i just uh that was it i said okay i'm not gonna pull any more cards on this i do i feel like i just got the confirmation that i kind of needed that i am connecting with something um and maybe it is specifically i don't know if there's a galactic council um like a council <laughs> maybe this the head of the council i don't know who this who this i want to say it just feel masculine it did look masculine in the image that came into my mind's eye and then this looks very masculine as well. And it's described as, um, I'm going to go into the book. Like I saw it immediately. To me, it looks like a lion, right? It looks like a lion. It even looks a little bit um, like, um, I want to say, uh, oh, what's that? Dr. Zeus with, um, how can I not remember what the hell that is called? You know, it's because I'm just like channeling. And when I try to stop and just think about stuff, it's like I can't access that part of my brain. Anyways, the, um, you know, the chopping down the trees, <laughs> that one. Um, this is not, and it's, it's number um, 33 too, right? Which is actually, I think it's a mass. Isn't that, 
is it 33 a master number? I'm really bad with that stuff. Like I don't, um, so this is the lion guide is what this is called. So that's what, like, and then when I, I stopped and I looked in the book, I'm like, I'm going to shit myself because this feels like crazy. Like it's so in tune with, and I just, I'm asking, is there, am I actually connecting with something? I feel like I am connecting with, um, I don't know, we'll call him the lion, the lion guide. Um, the lion guide is here to help you awaken the sleeping lion that lies within you. So we're going to, so what we're going to explore is very briefly with this card. Um, and then, so I will say that I believe that some of what is being spoken to is being spoken to me directly, like in terms of, okay, we want to use you as a channel to, to speak to, to others. Like that's how I see myself. I'm just like a channel. I'm like an antenna. Some people are satellite dishes. Some people are receivers. Some people are, um, snow tires. <laughs> I don't know. Like I had to define myself. I feel like I'm just like an antenna, right? I have an ability to be an antenna and I feel like I've tapped into something here and they would like to use me to communicate to you. So um, I do feel a little bit what they're saying is speaking to me. Yes, because that was the question I was asking for. But I think it is to like impart eventually and, and, and I say eventually. So maybe this is something that will kind of maybe be like um, the oak men when that energy was coming through to, to speak to you. I feel like I've tapped into stuff. So that was like a very old fairy earthly magic. And this is something obviously kind of galactic and spatial. So lion guide is here to help you awaken the sleeping lion that lies within you. Your inner lion is powerful, resourceful, and mighty. You really do hold the strength and courage to do whatever needs to be done. It is time to let the world hear your roar. Lion Guide is here to help you realize that you do rule your inner and outer worlds um, and to energetically claim your throne as the rightful ruler of your kingdom. So I feel like that is very sort of um, like mankind on earth, even like really like such a bold, strong statement. Once you do, you will step into your role as a leader with ease. And I really do feel like too, like, um, well, I don't know. I mean, I've been called on that many times to be like a spiritual leader. And I kind of pull back from that. So I'm like, I'm just like you guys. I'm just a person. I just see myself more as um, the antenna. So, yeah, but I feel like this is like, honestly it's all of us learning to be to be great leaders and but just like the words here like a lion guide a leader and this is what i'm thinking of my who am i connecting with who's trying to talk to me um was there something other earthly that was causing like that hum or whatever it was in the night was it something that was explainable that just you know maybe uh something i don't know but something something went on on there uh, yeah, so I'm going to be keeping this out when I do these readings, which is funny, like I did with the Oakman from Brian Froud's fairy deck. Um, so I do feel that the lion guide is here is being represent is representing a galactic council energy. And we're going to pull out the cards together on the camera because I, I don't know what the message is, why they want to talk to you. So I'm just calling this like an introductory, um, we're going to do this deck. We're going to do the um, the Divine Guidance and then the Return of Spirit deck. And I'm also going to use my, um, I don't have the booklet for it because I find I connect really easy with this, is the um, Starseed Oracle deck. So I thought, well, that seems like, like a good choice, right? So yeah, that's what we're going to do. I Actually, you're going to see because I'm going to, the camera, I'm going to kind of do like, um, you can see me shuffle it out and then we'll talk about it. I've made... I've been, in, I don't know if instructed or just inspired to kind of make like a crystal, a crystal and um, gem grid around where I'm pulling out these cards too. I've never done that before. So I'm going to start with the Divine Guidance um, deck. I'm, I'm going to try to keep this simple and just like we'll grow in it from there. So I'm going to get started and see what the Lion Guide from the Galactic Council why i guess or what's going on what's what's happening
think of the cards that came out? <laughs> so, like profound. All right, but you're probably like, okay, explain more to me, Cindy. Before even, like, let's just look at the simplicity here, right? I said, this lion guide, he's coming in as number 33. Did you see the numbers that we had here? And the underlying, look at in the underlying. Um, we had number 22 and number 44 come out as an underlying, guided by number 33. This is like really, I feel like a really powerful energy here. Again, I don't even understand it all. I'm not, I've not spent a lot of time exploring all of what the different um, doubled or mirrored numbers can mean. I just feel there's a significance to it. Sometimes I think I'm used as a channel because there's a lot of stuff that I don't know. So I don't necessarily put my own interpretation into some of the messages that come through. But anyways, I thought it was... Um, where did I see? I thought I saw. Oh no, that's weird. Okay, anyways. That's so I thought that was interesting. So let's get into the message, right? So the make the first card that comes out is absolutely beautiful. So this is about op operating and opening and activating the um the heart chakra to its fullest, its fullest potential. And it's it's interesting because it talks about um breathing like the breath work to do this so even in a meditation even just even you know if you don't have time to meditate just the few minutes before you go to sleep at night the few minutes before you wake up in the morning I'm kind of hearing so like even encompassing a simple practice like that is um working on this heart chakra energy I'm not gonna lie like I feel like there's something going on here about an ascended energy like about ascending like it's an ascended energy is kind of what I'm starting to feel when you know what's really crazy is that like this is talking about breath work to activate the heart and what is this card that came out with the star seed is breathe is the breathe card so breathe breath of the cosmos um so where I was going with this is before you go to sleep just as you wake up, so the point when you're in bed, uh, before you get out of bed as well in the morning or in the evening, if you have night shift, whatever, is to practice this breathing. So it is to focus the breathing towards the heart. So each breath, I want to say, is visualizing the heart, is the heart expanding in breath um, and activation. So, yeah, pretty powerful, right? And it's it's also about understanding that I mean, this is called the heart mind card. This is the heart mind card. So it is activating the mind through the heart. And I want to say the mind and in the intuition. So there's an activation energy here right now. Um, I think that's what this is about. Like, I think that's why this reading is here. It is activating. It's some sort of time for activation. Um, this energy has come forward at, at this time to speak to you about activating. So I'm just going to go through the cards quickly here and I'm going to piece it all together and I'm just going to continue to channel like openly. So breath of the cosmos, my will to thy will, micromanaging the universe. I feel like, you know, again, combining this with intuition, I feel like this is opening up channels and portals here. Um, this is opening up insight. This is seeing beyond the mundane. This is seeing the truth in yourself and the things going on around you um, and is doing this through the heart chakra. So the heart, again, the heart is just such a profound organ in the body it is functioning before any other organs are functioning it's beating before there's even a brain in the fetal stage right like it's just fascinating so that the heart does not need the brain to function and the heart is the center of the soul it is the the cosmic center of the soul um it is the energy of the soul and the breath feeds that so we can understand how this is connected right and it, i do feel like it is in a sense it is communicating to the mind or is allowing the mind to be cognitively more aware of things going on around you and who you are. And I feel like there is something here too about like increasing the frequency and the vibration. This is a time right now to increase frequency and vibration in the whole collective, in, in humanity, in humanity. Like I'm not, I'm not hearing with this energy. I'm not hearing typical words, words like collective. I am hearing humanity in humanity story. So in this to me, right, the breath, the breath work, there is a release. It is releasing old um, patterns, old energies, 
releasing that to the cosmos. I don't know if there's something like even physically going on. I don't, myself, I do not... I'm not really seeing, like, if I try to reach for an answer, I'm not seeing, like, a spaceship close to Earth. I'm seeing, like, sort of like a very advanced race of, I, let's just call them humanoid-type entities that may and may not at different times have stronger connections through us. I don't know if that has anything to do with um, astrological energies going on um but yeah I feel like there's a really strong connection right now or there's a very strong need at this time or maybe they're even kind of uh happening you know at the same time a need and an opening And I feel like, too, if you breathe in this cosmic energy, it is about filling the heart, filling the heart space with this cosmic um, truth and releasing cosmic um, untruths. So the intuition card, this is about really amplifying your intuition, your clairvoyant abilities. Um, I feel like myself, too, like in this reading, um, because I do feel like they're kind of talking to me in terms of wanting me to open up as well but this also this card also talks and i but all of to you right like i'm i didn't i this is where i stopped pulling off camera i just pulled this card off camera i'm like okay that's it <laughs> it's just um we need to explore this as a group um as humanity so this is about higher ascension energies uh tuning into and affecting the planet right like there's something very planetary very because when i say when I use the word collective, I feel like that can um, limit us to who I feel like I'm reaching at this time. Or I feel like uh, you, you could say, well, it's global. Well, then say global. I feel like it's globally and I feel like it's humanity um, is how I want to term that. It's people sitting in darkness, people sitting in low frequency, people who um, are just surviving and don't have time to even think about developing themselves spiritually. There's so much of that going on on the planet right now. Um, the other thing that comes in with this card is it's about opening up your gifts. It's about letting you see what your gifts are and what your purpose here is, which it's, it's actually kind of interesting because I've done at least one private reading where that came through and, um, yeah, person was opening like, yes, you have a gift here and you will be shown very soon what, how to apply it and what to do with it. So, um, those are like the cards that came out, right? So it's just fascinating the underlying cards. There's three underlying cards in the Divine Guidance. So it starts out, well, the first one that we see, though, is number 22. So this is the grid. That's the grid card. This is the Divine Guidance card. And this is the um, the Deeper Look card. So it's, not, it's so profound. Like, I'm just glad that we shoveled this on the camera. So where do we go? I actually feel like it goes in this order, which usually I would read um, the back card. Like this is our backstory and maybe it is so, but okay. So the great card is the living, the li the living energy of um, the earth, the matrix of the earth, um, dimensions and uh, realities beyond what we can see. Um, it is this grid in that we re exist in that, the pathways, the secret pathways um, to other dimensions and other realities. This is unlocking the keys to the um, subconscious mind to bring truth and clarity forward. You know, it's, I mean, it's a pretty profound card. And what's so interesting, right, is that it's, it sits behind divine guidance. So, Truth beyond anything that is spoken or has been built up um, by mankind. Now, I've touched on it in a lot of my readings in the past where, you know, we have societies, we have culture, we have systems. And a lot of times they are created in even a very um, small scale compared to where they exist at this time. Like an initial, an initial creation of an idea to serve a need 
in a specific space and time. And that worked really good. And then it just steamrolls and becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and um, more locked in to some sort of truth that may have existed 3,000 years ago, right? And some sort of a need. Like, I just feel like we never... It's always, well, it's always been this way, so it always shall. And if we're going to change anything, we're not really going to change it. We're just going to add to what already exists. And before you know it, like, we're not really following any sort of real truth here. Um, this is really interesting, too, for me. Uh, it's not something that I would normally gravitate to watch, but I watched on Netflix. I just finished watching it, like, a few days ago. Um it was chosen is it called chosen or the chosen i can't remember if the is in there or it's just chosen and it's um it's this, the uh, story of jesus just as he's about to kind of uh, walk forward and really be known for who he is right like as the messiah so i am my own personal feelings about religion again i feel like a lot of it is created by um people's need for power and holding power over others um, uh, Jesus, I'm a big supporter of Jesus. <laughs> Anybody who can turn water into wine, baby, and feed the masses and wash, wash the feet of, um, of the sick and the tired and the, I think like that. Yeah. But who created religions around him? If we look at the culture and the history of that, <laughs> again, so I'm not big into religion, but so I watched it and I thought, I thought it was really interesting because it's, it's like an awakening, pro awa an awakening process that took place really on earth. And I feel like there's something right now that is like that energy. What's well, been going on for a while, but this just to me feels really interesting and significant, obviously, because it's just probably too personally, it's involving me um, in this. So I would take it as a moment. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, it's time to do this. So um, this is about this, the divine guidance is about the important role that we each have in awakening, awakening the planet now. It is, um, you are protected and you are guided at this time to do that. The people that you were, I mean, I'm just seeing the chosen and like, Jesus just wandering around and we're just like hanging out with the kids. I thought, that's great. Like the kids really liked him. The kids were hanging out with them. And then just meeting people along, along the way and um, the profound impact that he had in significant areas of their lives that where they felt particularly um, held back, imprisoned, um, desperate, right? And then like kind of like, but I feel like this is us, but this message that I'm receiving, like I think it's interesting. It's almost like I watched that, that I watched that for a reason leading up to this kind of experience or this energy wanting to connect um, is each of us. So me to counsel you and you to counsel someone else. But this counsel comes with um, almost as often as described as a sense of leadership through example, right? Um, Jesus never told anybody what to do. Just gave them like, yo, here's the information. It's your choice. It's your choice. Hope you make a good choice. But like, right, it's your choice. So, um, and then it takes us to number 19, which is the the, the deeper look, <laughs> the deeper look, right? Like it's so profound. The grid, the matrix of earth, the um, the unknown realities and information beyond that, the divine guidance, the deep awakening, and then the deeper look. Opening a, opening a unique perspective, um, seeing energetic patterns in sometimes the smallest things and discovering the truth and all of that. So it's like I'm actually spending more time on the underline than I curse that came out because the underline is quite quite interesting. And then we get oh my god yeah no this is even bigger. The underline of the return to spirit deck. Um, did I look at the whole thing on camera? I think I did. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cards. Again, I'm gonna. Yes, this starts from the back. This one starts from the back. You know, maybe this one started from the back too. You could interpret it that way. Like taking a deeper look, finding divine guidance and seeing into the grid. Totally could, right? Or seeing into the matrix. I'm going to hold this card up because I think in the book, I think it does say, let me see, number 22. 
Um, hidden within this card are messages that only you can retrieve. See, so that's the very personal experience here. Sit with this one for a while. I would encourage you guys to, to get, this is one of her older decks, Cheryl Lee Harnish. Um, but here, I'm going to hold it up. I hope there's no reflection. I'll change the angle a few times. Feel free to screenshot it. Look at this card and just like, don't try. I was actually working with um, Sacred Geometry a couple of months ago and um, not as intensely as I first was, but still kind of working with it a bit now. And the whole idea behind that is not to, to sit there and try to, what am I seeing? It's almost like meditation, like just let your mind go. And it actually, it's supposed to subconsciously um, <clears throat> open up pathways of information that are, that are in there, that are in your mind. I did receive a message. I don't remember which reading it was um, a while ago about all the information in the cosmos is held in your mind. It is just about, it's just a matter of accessing it. And to me, I always see the proof of that in the monarch butterfly. I just think it's absolutely incredible that a butterfly is born here, like in, in Canada, and it lives a life as a caterpillar on a plant. And then it goes into that chrysalis and then it hatches out. It completely reforms into this beautiful butterfly and never known never in its physical state that it exists in at that point, having known anything beyond, could be a 10 foot radius, right? In its world. And now it like taps in and it flies to Mexico, <laughs> flies to Mexico for the winter, which actually they'll be starting to do right now from where I am. But this card, so that, you know, just, you don't have to think, you don't have to concentrate. You just look at it and let your mind go and let it do the work. It's, it's literally it. Like, it does the work with the sacred geometry. Um, it does the work for you. It happens. Your mind will do the work. It's almost like a key. It's like a key. And there's certain parts of each of, your, each of you in your mind that will be opened up. Um, so, yeah, I would encourage the sacred geometry as well. I can't remember what the deck is that I'm working with. Actually, you know what? I ordered it on Amazon, so I could tell you. It's a great... Um, It is a great. Oh. Okay, I gotta go to my orders. Uh, oh, Sacred Geometry Activations Oracle is what it's called. Right. Or well, that's what it looks like. So that's, that's the deck that I've been using. It's really, it's taken this woman years to make it. <clears throat> um, so, return of spirit, knowledge. Look at this, look at this underline. Like, it's kind of funny, right? We have divine guidance to me, which is kind of a return of, of spirit, but this is renewed heart, renewed heart, mind, and spirit connection which is funny right because we have the first card that came out is the heart mind card um so renewed heart mind connection and then we have um knowledge which to me is it's about downloading information it is about downloading information i kind of want to again um i feel like there's some messages in here for me it's almost like even preparing myself for this like maybe even having done the sacred geometry work in the last couple of months and um yeah, but I want to say again, it is me counseling you and then you counseling yourself and then you counseling others. But through it is a gentle, very sort of hands off approach in counsel, I think. Um, never forcing, always just showing and allowing. So but this is part of the process, right? It is downloading. And what does it do? But it brings in change of mind. It reactivates your mind. It's... Um, it changes your conscious focus. It opens up your subconscious. And even looking at this, like you can see this person in this card and the very like cactus. To me, it's like a very cactus. And cactus is bringing in, holds the nutrients during difficult times. 
change of mind creates integrity um i don't even need to like go into details with this it's just like it's literally like formulating a sentence change of mind creates integrity fearlessness immunity to um the past so now here's interesting interesting as i getting the immunity card because with this intuition card it also says that any enhancements that are happening to you or that you are about to experience in terms of in intuition and psychic and clairvoyant, these are permanent. These are permanent. Um, and I get that with the immunity card. The immunity card came out years and years ago for the Libra reading that I did that was a really um, uh, the hardest reading I've ever done. That one, right? I think it was one of the... Um, the immunity card came out anyways and basically said, whatever you've been through in the past, you have closed that off even on a soul level here. You cannot be affected by experiences like that again. If you have learned your lessons, right? And right, change of mind, integrity and fearless. And what comes in next, it's absolutely beautiful. It's simplicity. It is simplicity. It is as simple as that. And it is seeing the simple within our lives and around us um so the underline of the starseed oracle deck was called we have called soul gifts and training it's time to step up so that's how i would describe this entire reading it's time to step up you're being activated we're being activated right now and it's time to step up um earthed learning how to be human in the world but not of it so there's an obvious you know message that comes in with this card but i'm tapping into a, a less obvious message which is coming in for me which is basically paving the road for other like celestial souls to come in and start changing the frequency and the vibration of earth there's something so i'm seeing like an image of earth like sort of being initially impregnated with soul soul energy soul entities and then almost like it being closed off. Like, why was it closed off? I don't know why it was closed off. Almost like seeing an energetic field around Earth. And that was it. And it's almost like disconnected from source, from divine. Doesn't that make sense, though? Like, isn't that even, like, if you could describe, like, the energy in the story of Jesus as, as he was as a man, perhaps? Or something, something else? I, I don't know. I don't know. I know some people debate whether Jesus was real or not, but I just feel like like some of the historical documents about you know what took place. If it was only a couple thousand years ago, <laughs> you're like, whoa! But that's not really that long ago. It's not really that long ago, and there's a lot of things that have been documented that are also documenting Jesus that can be corroborated and like proven. Like you can see um, historical and um, evidence of that. So. Anyways, I don't know where I'm going with that. But it was almost like I'm just seeing that, like, yeah, why was it closed off? I don't know. But there's been, so I'm kind of seeing like this, if there are there points in time, maybe there are points in time. That's why I'm wondering why this energy is like here right now. There's a point in time um, that... If there's some sort of energetic field around earth that stops fresh souls from coming in and right these fresh souls come in to bring divinity into earth why was earth closed off from divinity why was it closed off from source why were the souls that are were in earth were closed off from source Yeah, so I'm not really getting an answer for that, but that's okay. Um, that's not really, I guess it's not important at this time. Maybe it'll come out at some point. At some point, one day, who knows. Um, but I do feel like like right now, it's almost like we're supposed to be doing something to start making some sort of significant energetic change. Some sort of significant, like, real changes that help support more sort of kind of divine soul <laughs> divine soul intervention i'm hearing so okay so earth is having a divine soul intervention um those that will also be coming to earth learning how to be human but not of the world right yeah 
know. It's almost like was Earth something like. Anyways, I don't know. Um, so that okay. I'm not gonna pull out any tarot cards. I mean, that's so that's the introductory message here. That so kind of in a nutshell, I want to say that this is a time of activation. It is a time um, to to focus on your breath. To focus on your breath and. If you do, if you do meditative practices, I want to say focus on your breath. Um, the breath focus at the heart chakra. Focus at the heart chakra, and <clears throat> this is all part of um, connecting the heart to the mind. And the heart, I'm hearing like in in this context of this reading, is um, sort of how this energy is connecting. This energy is connecting and showing us truth. Right. And all that is here again, this truth, this intuition, um, higher ascension energies, tuning into it to affect the planet in a positive um, and divine way. This is a permanent enhancement. So any things that you are going through right now is something that is going to stay with you. This is a long term enhancement. Right. This is and that feels pretty significant. This is not just a window of, oh, we are just having a bit of clarity here. The veil is a little bit thin. This is a permanent enhancement that um, happens here. There's definitely looking deeper, having a deeper perspective, um, looking at different patterns, understanding the, um, the energy around you, of yourself, what's going on, and through that divine guidance, um, understanding the important role that you play that you play right now in the planet um, in terms of awakening and raising vibration and frequency. And so, I mean, I'm just kind of like where I'm going with this is touching on this underline is the grid, the matrix is understanding it and seeing it. So that's, that's it. So I kind of want, I'm going to create, um, uh, what are they called? <laughs> well, again, trying to stop and think I'm going to create, um, a video playlist is that what's a playlist yeah a play i want to call it a library <laughs> the playlist you know i have like the zodiac you can go into my playlist there and i have different everything is categorized so like the oak man this will be categorized as the galactic um council readings so yeah um so i'm gonna do um for those that are interested i am gonna do an extended i'm not gonna ever put in the extended like anything profound that is part of your activation i wouldn't do that but if there's anybody interested i want to just explore a little bit more like um about this energy see if i can learn more about it individualistically um or is this like a consciousness like a whole consciousness placed into sort of one archetypal um being and then kind of like to like why now so why now out of any other time um but yeah i just want to understand more about that so yeah if you want to see that either the link to that is in the top of the description within this video and that is what i have for you my friends so thank you so much till next time be gentle with yourselves bye